everybody. My name's Colin Brown, and I'm the engineering director at the uh, IMACE, the Institute of Mechanical Engineers. And if there's one thing that you've got to remember from today, it's that this was sponsored by the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, and therefore it is mandatory that you all join it. Lifelong, average membership years, uh, 34 years, uh, if you join. So uh, you are part of being here today is that you see us, and hopefully you decide of your own free will that for the next 34 years, and on average, you will be a member of the institution. This is my third year um, involvement with this challenge, and I think it's a fantastic challenge. And this um, teaching method that I know is used here in Salford and, and, and the other universities, the CDIO teaching method, is one that uh, you will have used and you will be using in working out your challenge and in succeeding today. So I think it's very important that um, you, you grasp this idea of conceive, design, implement, and, and operate, because it's, it's applicable to a whole range of activities in life. You've got to conceive what is the problem, what actually is the problem. You've then got to design some sort of solution. You've got to say, well, maybe this would solve that particular problem. You've then, whether you use Meccano or not, you've then got to come up with an implementation. You've got to say, well, if I build this, try this, survey this, force this, then maybe it'll, it'll work, and you try it off once. And then if that works, you go on and you operate, and you say, well, this will repeatedly will solve that particular problem. And when it doesn't, you start again, and you say, well, maybe I didn't understand the problem, and maybe uh, I could conceive of a different problem, design a different solution, try off a different experiment, and repeat some different operation. And in the past, if you'd have been here last year or the year before, I talked about how very useful this is for your love life. Um, but today, because we have a distinguished audience, I won't describe your love life. I will describe how useful this is for global warming. Um, and you can't read this slide, but it's a very famous slide by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which describes that if the temperature of the planet increased by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 degrees across the top, then the sort of things down the left-hand side, which are food, water, ecosystems, extreme weather events, and irreversible events would start to occur. And there's stuff in there that under five degrees, that's average five degrees global warming, we would be losing towns, well, you probably don't care, but we'd be losing towns like London, so which matters more to me than you, uh, Shanghai, New York, Tokyo, Hong Kong, the Amazonian rainforest would collapse, there would be no ice on Greenland, and there would be one billion people without water if it were to warm up. So my, as we're in quiz mode here, can we do the old hands thing again? How many of you believe, we can have the grown-ups do this as well, you can take part, you know, it's not all not for you. How many of you believe the planet is heating up? How many of you believe at the moment that the planet is heating up? Okay, it's going, to, it's going to be a test of circulation, this, because I want you to keep your hands up, please, if you think the planet, and I think the planet is heating up. How many of you believe that humans have got anything to do with that? Keep your hand up if you think that humans have got something to do with that. How many of you then keep your hand up if you believe that there's anything that you personally are going to do, having conceded it's warming up, having conceded that it's humans that are doing it, is there anything you personally are going to do to make that any better. Well, that's fantastic, because unlike Meccano, which went completely wrong for Steve, 40% of the population, and it'll be on the Salford omnibus, I suppose, rather than the Clapham omnibus, 40% of the population of Britain do not believe that the planet is heating up. 40%. Another 50% of the population don't believe that they can do anything about it, that actually it's China or India or America or whatever it is that can, that can do activity about it, do something about it. Only one in ten people think that they can do something about it and prepare to take action. And that was broadly what you, what you showed there. So we're in a situation where 99% of the academic population, 99% of those people who study this, believe the planet is heating up and they believe that humans are causing it. And yet you go out into the planet, and uh, into the world, go into the software, and 40% don't even believe it's heating up. So I'm going to use CDIO, Conceive, Design, Implement, Operate, to look at that as a, as a kind of a problem that we're trying to, trying to solve. So here's a little bit of climate change as a, uh, a Chinese fisherman. Not going to be in work for much longer, is he? Um, 
This is Cockermouth from uh, 10 days ago. And, uh, and uh, you all know Newton's third law. You've always done Newton's third law, haven't you? Equal and opposite reaction. Why that bloody helicopter doesn't land on the roof, because the force that it's exerting on the roof is equal to its weight anyhow. just happens to be slightly distributed through an airstream, but uh, it might as well sit on the roof. But that's, uh, that's rescuing people in Cockermouth. And this, apparently, though I've never been there, is Melbourne uh, in Australia. Uh, and these are people uh, who are concerned about the flooding of Melbourne should sea level rise. So there are people out there who believe climate change is happening. And I just want to use the CDIO technique now to see how they might deal with it. So if I was a scientist, 99% of us believe that it's caused by humans. And the carbon dioxide level for the last 10,000 years, this is irrefutable, nobody would dispute this data. It's based on ice core information. The carbon dioxide uh, level hasn't changed at all for the last 10,000 years until the last 100 uh, or so years. It's also true of the methane level and the nitrous oxide level and the, re and the atmosphere. And nobody disputes this data. What the problem is, is that if you increase those gases in the atmosphere, it changes the thermal behavior of the atmosphere. So the solar radiation coming in has a different effect, and you have this thing called radiative forcing. So the composition of the atmosphere is changing, and as a result of that, the temperature of the Earth is changing. I didn't say that humans did that, but the composition of the, uh, of the atmosphere is changing, and therefore the temperature of the Earth is changing. 